Well, hello, Cindy Fox National Area. I love your national sales director. I love that she is um, putting a focus on the throne, being a queen. And I think there's consultants and directors involved in this. So know that there's a weekly throne. You know, my my time on the throne for the company as the number one director at Emerald Sales um, was in 2002. But that was the culmination of me being queen in Debbie Moore's unit in sales, a director number one in her area in production and in uh, team building. Um, so there's year end thrones for you as consultants and directors. There's unit, there's national area, and there's company. So the mindset of a queen though, you know, Esther was born at a time such as this and she didn't pick being a queen. She didn't say, I'm growing up to be a queen. I mean, really, she was kidnapped and she was groomed to be in a harem. Like, we make this story sound really glamorous, but I don't know. It may be called um, the sex trade business now. Really, if you think about it. So she ended up being the queen, um, not because she gold for it. She wasn't in competition. You know, the, they were bathing her and making her smell good. And there was a little competition there, but not that she really could do much about that. I mean, the king picked her. And, you know, again, I believe that was probably by God's design because he is on his throne and he does things purposefully. And it put one of his people in a position to save his people. God's done this all along, putting his people in places for purposes that he knows far before you ever know what's going on. You know, I had sat on lots of thrones and it was ironic to me that I um, actually came to enjoy sitting on those thrones because it it was always a mile marker for me. There was always so many lessons that I had learned in the process because there's so many people's lives that are intertwined with us in our journey. Um, the mindset of a queen, I believe it's not competing with other people. It's not um, you like wanting to compete with your peers to be on that throne. It's you really zeroing in on what has God called you to do? If he's called you to pay some bills, if he's called you to serve through this opportunity, if he's called you to these different mile markers, a car, a unit, a bumblebee, a trip to take your husband on, then you do that well and you're going to be surprised where it takes you. It may even land you on a throne. Debbie Moore, I was in her unit when she was number one. Um, so I was one of the five units at Offsprung that year, the first one. So there's always someone who has to be first, right? That's a catalyst. So in your unit, you could be first to have a $1,000 week. You could be first to have a $2,000 week. You could be first to have a $10,000 retail month. You could be first to, you know, get your car. You could be the next red jacket. Directors, you can be the first in your national area for lots of different things. Someone's got to be first. I was the first director to Offspring that year, and so four other followed. Debbie Moore ended up on the throne. I got to see her crown by Mary Kay Ash. Um, and by the time I was a queen, Mary Kay wasn't with us any longer. But I do remember Debbie telling me, you have no idea how much this is going to mean to you and your family to be up there. And I really didn't. You know, I have a picture of when I was queen and you can listen to to hear more of the story because that was quite a year. God made it real clear to me. He did not need me very much. 9-11, being out of the country for three weeks, pneumonia for eight weeks, and my son um, in January of that year finding out that he needed open heart surgery and it would be the last day of the seminar year. That was quite a year. <laughs> um, I was grateful I had worked when I could prior to that because when you work when you can, when you can't, this business will take care of you. There were six women that chose to be sales directors that year. I didn't make them sales directors. The last month, I was literally out of the office, out on my knees, hands and knees, praying and walking through this with my family. Um, but when we sat up on that throne, I had Debbie Moore had just crowned me. Tom Watley was our president then. Look at Jake. 
Ah, oh, he was 10. He had just had open heart surgery less than 30 days before. In that picture, we had gone to the royalty reception. He decided to like put his face, I think, underneath the chocolate fountain at the royalty reception. It was down his shirt, in his shoes. Someone had raced him back to the hotel to get him changed. There's Alden, who you now know as a senior sales director with Mary Kay. She's now 28. He's now 30. There's my husband, Larry. We will celebrate next month 34 years of being married. But you guys, what this picture of being on the throne meant to me is that God didn't need me as much as I thought he did. He just needed me to stay in the word and to trust him and to do the work. And he was going to elevate me when he wanted to. Um, I think if I would have tried to be a queen, um, I'm not sure it would have happened. This really was his elevation. And I'm not saying I didn't work. I didn't sit around and wait for God to do the work. Like, don't blame shift to him when you're not willing to do the faces, grow your unit size, grow your team, take personal responsibility. If ever in our world, there's more women than ever that need to hear what Mary Kay has to offer. But when I look at this picture, it is, if you've done the Experiencing God workbook, he teaches us, we're taught to set up spiritual markers. Think of, God would tell his people, make a pile of 12 rocks in the middle of that Jordan River to remind everyone of what I did here. When I look at this picture, I have these pictures all over my house. And this was, what, almost 20 years ago next year? Because it's a reminder. It's a spiritual marker. This is when I had the least control of my business um, and my life. And had the most blessing. Think of that, you guys. Do what God tells you to do when you're supposed to do it. It was fun, fun, fun sitting up there and having Jake thank everyone for praying for him. You guys, where else? Because of my position that year, number one or two in the nation, we ended up number six in the nation. Do you have thousands of women and families praying for your son? Maybe that's why he walked out of open heart surgery the day after. No meds, no tubes, walked out of the hospital. I mean, literally, it was miraculous. God. It's God. So, you know, the mindset of a queen, you know, I think Mary Kay modeled for us. It's that steadfastness, Esther, you know, she didn't, again, grow up thinking, I'm going to be a queen. No, she gets kidnapped. She gets thrown to a harem. We call that now like a sex trade. She, no, I, I don't think that she ever grew up thinking that. I never grew up thinking I'd be a queen. But was it fun? Yeah. Am I glad Mary Kay gives up that opportunity? And it gave me an opportunity to share my family. It gave my family an opportunity to see what does it look like to be successful from God's perspective that's a lot different than being successful in the world's perspective, a lot. You know, it felt awesome. Um, my speech can share more of the story. Go to Dawn Ott and Sweeney. I have two YouTubes for some weird reason. They're getting combined, but Dawn Ott and Sweeney YouTube station will have my speech so you can hear more about that year. But you guys stay focused. I stayed focused every month. I've been in Mary Kay. I've had a non-negotiable that was willing I was willing to work through that finish line and reach that goal regardless, just like with the job. You know what? When I went to business school and had jobs, internships, and right out of college, I they don't pay you. You get fired if you don't finish the job. It's not like, you know, I'm hoping, I'm wishing, I'm putting a goal poster up and, you know, I'm fixing to get around to it. No, nope, you get fired for that. You figure out how to make it happen. I had non-negotiable goals every quarter every month as a consultant, as a director, and now as a national sales director. And so that led me to thrones. I wasn't making a goal of a throne because you're competing with other people and you don't know what they're doing. So that's not a race you necessarily can win, but you running the race that he set before you, sometimes it's a trip that you're working for to pay for for your family. Maybe it's a mortgage payment. Maybe it's debt to get out of. Maybe it's, who knows, there's lots of needs. How about putting gas in your gas tank right now? That could be a big one to sell a lot of products for and team build. But if you stay focused on that and you also 
invest time into your business when you can. And when you can is not when you feel like it. It's not when everything is perfect. It's not when it's the right season in your life or the right season in the world. When you can. When you can't is when you're in emergency rooms with people and something happened dramatically, not planned. Um, even Jake's, I mean, we knew for those six months he was going to have, need to have open heart surgery. That really wasn't an emergency. Um, I had to alter my plans in that last month. There was lots of time in the world and keeping my head straight. Joyce Meyer's Battlefield of the Mind really kept me probably out of the nut house and off of, you know, some way to uh, calm myself um, down. But you guys, when you stay in his word and you work your business, um, and swim in your own lane, when the time comes, there may be a throne that you end up on. You'll be ready, like Queen Esther was, to stand up and do what she was called to do for her people. You guys, there's a lot of people right now, Mary Kay created this so that you have thrones and you have platforms that you're going to get to share all the cool things that he's done in your life. Well, first you have to trust him and be obedient so you have those stories. They can't just be other people's stories in the Bible and in Mary Kay. They need to be your stories. And you start those off by setting your goals and walking through it when it's uncomfortable and when it's inconvenient. And when you do that, I promise you, there very possibly could be thrones in your future. You guys, Mary Kay has made this very fun for us. And the prizes, our Cinderella prizes, sitting on those thrones. You know, I pray that the thrones that you get to sit on are markers for you. There are times when, you, when God shows up and you are clear and you know that he did this. He elevated you. You did your part in the natural and he'll do his part in the supernatural. Okay, guys, I look forward to this. I can't wait to see what thrones you're going to sit on and who is going to allow him to elevate them because you're willing to do the book coach sell recruit to be Jesus hands and feet through this product and this opportunity because <laughs> lots of people in our country need you right now. Just like Esther, she was in this world at a time such as this, as you are, where there are people who are perishing in their minds, in their finances, in their hope, and you're in Mary Kay at this time that you can offer them an antidote to all of that. Whether you sit on a throne or not, you can be an answer to their prayer. But how cool if you get to sit on a throne and be an answer to prayer at the same time. Okay, you guys, um, enjoy and listen to that inner circle national sales director that you have. I cannot wait for us to both be celebrating all of your wins because that's what it's going to take for these areas to be inner circle. And that's what we desire more than anything else is for you to step into what God's called you to.